The Toronto Wolf Pack will make their Super League debut on February 2nd, 2020. It reads like a Disney movie script. Promotion to Super League in three years. There's something special about the Wolf Pack. Signing Sonny Bill Williams. With the profile of Sonny Bill Williams, what can Toronto do? We're not just getting into the top competition. You know, you can't just approach the season and go, right, we won at the weekend, that's our job done. Our aim has got to be to win Super League. It's been a brilliant story since the, uh, the inception of the Wolfpack, which started in 2017. It was something completely new, completely different. A lot of us came together to kind of like take a chance, um, to, to kind of do something new in the game, something in Canada that, that didn't exist. Second year was really tough to take. The whistle blows, London! They have won a trialist game by four points to two. It was almost heartbreaking that, that year, um, but then you get another go at it, don't you? I well, we came back to pre-season, ever more determined to, to get, get over the final line, and that's when, obviously, Matt came in. To get a team promoted from one level to another in itself is difficult, and everything that went on last year, of all the success we had, we only lost one game. It came down to one performance for 80 minutes. That got a bit scary, you know, in, in building up to it. No doubt about this one, the pressure is on the home side, on the Toronto Wolfpack to avoid the disappointment of last year's defeat to earn a place in Super League. I was just nervous and just, we just need to do our job. The ambition we have as a club, we had to win and like we had to get in Super League. I don't know what would happen if, if we had another year in Championship. The biggest game in Toronto's history, we said that 12 months ago. They were upset by London, they do not want history to repeat itself. You know, to finally get to the, the last game of the season, the, the, the final playoff at the Million Pound Game in Toronto again, like the week of that I was, I was so nervous because, you know, of everything that happened before, but Mac really good about keeping you cool and calm. You know, I've been a believer for a long while then, you know, if your players are in the right frame of mind, they're a difficult team to beat, regardless what strategy you've got. The Featherston do not fear anybody, and for me, this is a 50-50 contest so far. Half-time, Toronto four, Featherston six. A bit conservative in the first half. It wasn't really pulling the triggers we needed to. It was a tough game. It was, um, it was a bit nerve-wracking because I know a lot of lads were in that position um, the year before. Yeah, half-time, we were sat in the change rooms and like, everyone was just like looking around and... I was just like, oh no, like, no, this can't, this can't, we can't, we can't. I wasn't there last year, but I was like, this can't happen again. When Matt came in, he, he kind of brings this like calmness to the team and we were in the change rooms and we were down by two, but it was a completely different scenario to the year before, even though the scoreline was the same. Classic grand final, because nobody ever runs away in a grand final. It's always a, a game of chess. So they made it a real contest during the game, so we had to be really resilient. We had to hold our nerve during the game. Featherstone will find it hard to live with this pace. And we spoke about like, we're doing the right things. We just they they wouldn't be able to live with us that that intensity all all game. So we just knew we just kept doing what we're doing, applying the same pressure. Brian McDermott has tried his best to take that pressure and said, "Look, let's just go out there and let's collect the prize." Jack Bossy been penalised for throwing Tom Alderson off, and now look what that's done to them. They're under pressure yet again. Sutcliffe with the tackle, McGrow still going. The game was waiting for somebody to step up and take it by the scruff of the neck. When, when Blake came off the bench, I think that was that was a massive lift for us. The Toronto Wolfpack looking at the line. 
I was packed down in the scrum and then I got my head up and then I just saw the left foot step and I was like, right, he's got him. Wallace looking for the line as he found it. Blake Wallace under the post. Referee gives the try. Toronto Wolves back in the front. Going over to him and seeing the pure emotion on his face, I was like so happy for him to get that moment and to be able to share that moment with him. He pulled that try back and I think everybody everybody got up for it that little bit more. Boom, that was it then, momentum changer, pressure, bar uh, released off and then we just we started to play then. Wallace gives it to Bodie, Thompson bumps off one, puts the ball down and Bodie Thompson scores! Two tries in five minutes, Mella with a dummy, Mella with another dummy, he's still going Joe Mella! Gets up, touches the ball down, Joe Mella might just have won this game for Toronto Wolfpack! You just feel the crowd getting behind him, it was a, it was a, it was a massive lift having, having them there and being in Toronto. I think it was about five seconds before the hooter went and Chase was like <laughs> slapping hands with me and I was like, he's like, we've done it mate, we've done it. And I was like, I was thinking, no, we've got five seconds, like let, let's just keep a lid on it. Referee Chris Kendall is saying we've got to form this scrum. Toronto Wolfpack have won the million pound game. The Canadian side will take their place among the Super League elite in 2020. Just wanted to win, just wanted to win that game. So, just for me, I was just, just like a big, like, yes, uh, we've done it. So, relief for me, and obviously then, I was just a lot, a lot of happiness. Now, we've worked so hard this year, and we've had everything thrown at us, and we just keep turning up for each other, and honestly, it's probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. It's unbelievable. You know, all of us just soak it in that, triumphant win to get to the final place was something that I'll never forget as long as I live. It, uh, it was one of the proudest moments I've had in the game. That was their performance, that was their playoffs, that was their build up to games. It was, it was one of relief, first off, you know, we, we won the game, but then one of immense pride. Job done, wasn't it? Got the job done. Million Pack Game winners and Super League band. When I speak to people, I tell them we're going to get five weeks off. They, they, they can't really believe it because we're back in, and as soon as we're back in, that's it, then that's us for another. Another 11 months. <laughs> it's pretty much full year round. I'm really excited to start. You spend five weeks away from each other after spending so long together. Looking forward to doing some running and get, getting back into it with the lads. Yeah, I'm excited to get back into it. Building for the Star Super League. Today's quite a simple and straightforward day. We're going to take the lads through some baseline testing, see who actually behaved themselves through the off season, see who um, had one cake too many. First thing first, we're going to get warmed up. Take a nice little jog from red to blue, from blue back here. Please tell me it's not the first time you've run. John Kelly's your typical conditioner. His Christmas comes early in the middle of November when it's day one and he gets to do all of his tests and everything like that. Get there, get there, get there, get there. My favourite part of the entire season would be uh, day one of pre-season. You can smell the fear. I think it got sprung on us a couple of days before that we were coming in and, and doing a yo-yo test. It's weird, it kind of brings you back to like, like a, child, a childhood state when you come into like an exam or something. This shows. Have you actually been training this off-season or not? The participants should now be in their starting positions, ready to receive 
the final information. Liam Kay has just described it as waiting to be shot, so that pretty much sums up the feeling these guys are going through right now. It's a strange test because it starts on something like level five, five one. and then after two runs it'll go to level nine, nine one. another two runs it'll go to level 13. One. It's the quickest fitness test I've ever done. Joey Mello, vest off. But I don't, I don't know why it's so daunting. It's just that this big thing's been built up around it. They don't want to be the first one to drop out. Joey's out. Ah. I was a little bit ill dude, a couple of days before it, so that, that was my excuse. <laughs> 18, seven. The backs are on before us. They're normally better than us because they're a lot lighter. Quick turn, big man. Out, get the beef back for the beat, but that turn for the big for those big fellas, it's like turning a ferry. Use the off-season weight, lean forward. It's always a common joke between the forwards that who's going to be the first ones to drop out because then you start seeing everyone drop out like flies after that. So you, you go in and you, you iron each other up, you're seeing like if they're if they're making the line or not. Gadwin, vest off. Vest off, Mult. Vest off, Dicko. <laughs> See, the lads like, like to say the mate because they reckon I do a secret yo-yo before we come in and actually do our yo-yo, which I obviously don't do. But I'd just like to come back in right, decent go shape. Again, go again. 18 This week is relatively easy. Difficult in a the sense they've got to start getting up early again, they've got to start thinking about being rugby league players again, but in terms of difficulty, this will be the easiest week they'll have. And then the week leading up to Christmas is the most difficult week they'll have. We're in the early stages of pre-season where it's all heavy work. It's dark, it's wet, it's horrible, it's cold, and that's how we exactly want it to be. We're going to be involved in a really challenging competition next year, so we're going to go through some tough moments now, and that's what pre season is all about. Looking forward to the challenge, like the effort each week. It's going to go up mentally, physically. Rugby, you've you've got your team, and you've got to, you've got to have their back. You've got to cover for them. You know that like we are putting our bodies on the line for each other. Like when we go out on the field, I think you create a, spe a special bond. When a new guy comes into the team, it's it's always pretty similar because you don't get many bad people in rugby league. Everybody is welcoming, that, that, that's the nice thing. At the end of the day, we're all just a bunch of lads who, who like playing rugby and it's, it's quite easy to, to get on with a rugby lad. When we first started out, we set a goal of getting into Super League and, and now we've achieved that. People that sign, they're winners. That's something that the club's trying to move towards. No one starts a league and doesn't want to win. To breaking news now regarding the playing future of Sonny Bill Williams. One of the big talking points this week has been the potential move of Sonny Bill Williams away from Rugby Union. He's made his mind up to join the Toronto Wolfpack. All black star Sonny Bill Williams is coming to Toronto. And the sport that made him a household name. It's money from SBW. This is a Kawhi coming to the Toronto Raptors. A David Beckham coming to the Galaxy. There's Sonny Bill Williams and then there's Daylight. What Toronto are doing is making people around the world take note of Super League. So in terms of rugby, it doesn't get any bigger. In terms of sport, I don't know, I think that's for you to answer.